So today I thought I would take you through some really cool text effects that you can do in Illustrator by using inbuilt type and offset path. So I think we'll probably do about three or four examples. So we'll go through the first way, which is pretty basic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a nice, nice heavy text for this example. And before we do anything, let's just adjust the kerning a little bit. So we've got some overlap happening and then we're going to create outlines and then we see there's a slight overlap, not too much. Uh, and we can change it a little bit more when we ungroup this. So now that it's ungrouped, each of these is its own little object. Okay, which gets rid of the inherent character edits abilities because now we're working with actual objects as opposed to type. So now that we have our text, we want to make it look a little bit more interesting. I'm going to select it all and I'm going to go to object path. I'm going to go to offset path. And what it's going to do, if I just put the preview on is it creates a copy of the object that you specified, but it makes it slightly bigger by a dimension that you set here. So at the moment it's set to 10 pixels. So it makes it exactly 10 pixels bigger along the outside, if that makes sense. If I wanted a really thick outline, sometimes when you do it with text, you start losing the integrity of the actual letter because as you increase your outline, it starts creeping into the actual body of your, your letter over here and it starts making it look a bit funky. So this way you can give really cool outlined effects without actually changing anything about the integrity of your existing letter. So, that's a little too small. So I want to zhuzh it up a bit. We'll go to about 15 pixels. Yeah, that'll do. And you can specify how you want the corners to look pretty much. You can have rounded corners. Mitre pretty much keeps it the same or beveled. Gives it a little cutaway. Um, so it depends on how you want it to look. So for our case, we're just going to stick with, yeah, we'll stick with round. Actually, let's keep the integrity of the letter and we'll go with mitre. Sorry, just play around. This is this is what I do. There we go. So don't press anything. As soon as you press OK, it will just have selected this offset path that you've just created. So before you click away from that or deselect them, we're going to change the color so we can at least see the difference between our original text and the offset path. My plan with this was to create some cool kind of overlapping effect. So pretty much when I have everything selected, I can still see obviously where my letters begin and end in relation to each other. So I maybe want to have this R in front of the E, but because of that, I want to have cut away a little bit of the E so we have blank space between the letters so they're not actually touching. If that sounds confusing, bear with me. It'll all make sense soon. So I'm going to go into my shape builder. Now shape builder and offset path together are like a powerhouse couple. You can do so much stuff with type with these two things. So that's what we're going to use. So I'm going to get my shape builder and now we have to make some decisions. So Let's say I want to have my R, my B and my L in front of the two E's. The two E's are going to sit behind these three letters. How Shape Builder works is a really little wacky way. So you can see here if I hover over this E, if I click on this, it's basically going to treat this shape as separate to this one, this one, Anywhere where there's an overlapping line or element, it's going to treat it as a separate shape. And that means you can get really creative with anything that's overlapping. So let's look at the shape of our R. At the moment, Shape Builder is breaking it into this shape, this shape, and this shape. So I want to tell Shape Builder that no, you need to treat this all as one shape. So I'm just going to draw over where I want my shape to be. And here. If you make a mistake, just undo it. Because we're using our offset path as our cutaway shapes, we don't really want to see any green by the time we're done with this. And I'll show you how we're going to get that done. 
So now that we, we have our R, let's go to our B and let's just fill in our complete B like so and like so and finally our L and there we go. So now we've established that our R, B and L are in the front and now we want to cut away all the green. So to do that, we still have our shape builder, but this time we're going to hold down Alt. I think it'll probably be option if you're working on a Mac, but don't quote me on that. So we're going to hold down Alt and you can see that the, our cursor changes from a plus, as in we're adding to the selection, to a minus, we're taking away from the selection. So we want to get rid of all the green. So let's get rid of the obvious greens, all the bits of green on the outside of our shape. And now, if we zoom in a little bit, wherever we have this green that we can still see the shape of over here, we want to cut that all away. So I'm going to hold down Alt. Now, sometimes this can be tricky, so you've got to have a steady hand, especially if it's really small, but just be patient. And we want to keep holding down Alt while we draw all the way down there. And let's get rid of that. And we're going to do the same here. Hold down Alt and draw all the way down to the bottom. And you've got to remember that whatever letter is in front, it's cutting away from what is behind. So if these E's were in the front, we'd be cutting into the B, probably be cutting around here. And we would still have that reference mark there for us. It takes a bit of a while to get used to Shape Builder using the offset path, because sometimes you, you're just not sure of what you need to delete and get rid of and you have to have a few tries. And there we go. That's a really super simple way in how to use our shape builder and our offset path to give us a little bit of interest to just normal text. Okay, so for our next example, we're gonna play around with the same methods, but just using a little bit of a more organic kind of hand-drawn text to show how the same method can look slightly different. Same thing, I just want to have the letters close enough so there's a little bit of overlap going on, like so. That'll do, so let's create some outlines and then we'll go into object, exactly as we did before, path, offset path, and yeah, I think 15 will do. Okay. Now remember, as everything is still selected, we'll change the color. If you don't, it's just that harder to differentiate between what you want to get rid of and what you want to keep. So remember, we're always keeping the black, we're getting rid of all the green, but the choice comes in how we decide to layer the letters that we have. So for this one, I kind of like the fact that every new letter is on top of the letter that came before. So let's, let's just stick to that. So we'll select them all. We'll go to our shape builder. So we've established that K is gonna be in front of everything else. So let's just paint in our K, boom. And then C will be ahead of A, A will be ahead of L, and L will be ahead of SC. We went a bit too far there because we've got a tiny shape there. There we go. Rightio, now we just cut it out. So let's do the obvious cutting. Hold down Alt and drag over the general outline. Like so. And then let's start cutting away here. It's so quick and easy once you get the knack of it. And it, it can make things look so much more interesting, especially, like I say, if you're just working with the type that you have, um, convert it into outlines and just play around. You know, if I wanted to take this even further, let me show you something I did earlier. We'll end up with something like this. So we've basically, we did rebel slash rebel first, then we did slack, and then we essentially gave slack another offset path and then we cut it away from Rebel. So whatever background you put that on, 
We're not having to change colors of outlines or anything silly like that. It's transparent gaps, which can be really, really powerful. There we go. So that's just one simple method on how to utilize both your shape builder and your offset path with text to make some really cool designs. So utilizing the same idea, we're going to do something a little bit different now. And then what I want to do for this one is I want to paint like a swirly line that travels through the text. And then by using offset path and shape builder, some of the swirl will go behind the letters, some in front, behind in front, and it'll give it a little bit of interest. So same thing as before, we're just going to create outlines of our text and then like so. So our line is still just a path. So we want to just expand that so it becomes an object. Otherwise, we won't be able to offset the path of that. So now that everything's done, let's just get rid of those. Select them all. Same as before, we'll go to object, path, offset path. It's just preview and OK. So now we have to decide how we want this path to interact with these letters. So we'll go into our shape builder. Um, it's selecting green. I don't want green because that's just going to confuse everyone. Change it to black. So we're going to have this bit of the S in front. Okay, so we're just drawing the bits so we want in the front. So that's one shape. Okay. And then this is going to be in front and then it's going to go behind and then we want it in front again over here. So we'll keep that as it is, but then this bit of the W we want in front, that's going to be behind. This will be in front, that's going to be behind and this is going to be in front. Okay, so now <clears throat> we're going to be cutting away the green, but we also, depending on where the line is going, whether it's going behind or in front, we'll also be cutting a little bit of the line as well. So let's get rid of the obvious green, which is holding down Alt and clicking the beginning and the end of our line. And then we know that this is going in front of our S over here. So nothing we have to do here. We just want to get rid of the green around it. So we're going to hold down Alt get rid of that and we also want to hold down to get rid of this green as well so wherever the line shape intersects our letter shapes we're going to do a little cutaway over here and it'll end up looking pretty cool and remember because this is now intersecting our line here we want to cut away this shape as well there we go and now onto our W, same thing. Let's get rid of that. And because our line is coming in front of our letter, we're cutting away where the green is over here and below over here. And now we have it going behind. So we're gonna cut away this green, but we'll also remember they're touching. So we also wanna cut away where it enters behind the letter and where it comes out over here. And we just keep going along that vein. So a little bit of housekeeping. When it comes to using offset path along with Shape Builder, what Illustrator does is it basically stacks things on top of each other. So even though this might look all neat and tidy now, if I had to move this line, we can see that those existing shapes that were there behind the line before are still there. So you need to bear that in mind, especially if you're creating this specifically for things like print, you'll be able to see that when you zoom in quite closely. I don't know how clear you'll see it now. But when you export it, you'll be able to see a really jaggedy edge wherever that is happening behind your actual image. So it's always worth 
when, when you've worked like I've shown you now is to go in and do some cleanup. And I found the easiest way to do that is just selecting the offending object, just locking it in place and then whatever it's selecting underneath that, just going ahead and deleting it. But you can see when I select this, it's selecting all my letters because it's all grouped. So in that case, I'm just going to use my direct selection and just delete, drag over and delete where I know these offending shapes are. And all you should be left with is what you actually want to see on your screen. So for this final example, I'm going to work with an image this time. So I've brought an image in of the sea and using the same methods as the previous examples, we're going to do something but add a shape to interact with our lettering. So we're going to have a nice blocky text again. And then I'm going to bring a circle in. So we'll create a circle. Bring it to the front and create our outlines. And then let's just line this up nicely within the circle. Okay, so doing the same as we did before, we'll select our text and we'll go to object, path, offset path. And I think this time I'm going to have it as round as opposed to, I think we had it at mitre before, but we'll have it at round. That looks okay. And then we'll change the color so we can see what we're working with. There we go. So now we want to select everything. Everything that we want to either cut into or join needs to be selected when we're using the Shape Builder tool. So let's just zoom in a bit. And we want to get rid of all the light green. So we'll just hold Alt. And as we're cutting this, remember it's going to cut into our circle as well because our circle's selected. If we didn't have our circle selected, it would just cut this out and our circle would remain as it was. And that's not what we want. So always make sure that everything that you want to be a part of your design is selected when you're using your shape builder. Okay, so we're gonna hold down Alt and we're just gonna cut. And then I'm gonna just select everything and color it white. And then we'll just group this and we'll just change a line to artboard so we can get that nicely aligned in the middle. And there we go. I think to finish that off, we probably want to bring down the opacity. There we go. So that was really quick. It could have been neater. could have done something more with the top of the F here, but that just shows you how you can use either lettering lines, or shapes and just play around with all the bits and pieces you can do using just these two tools your shape builder and offset path i hope that's been interesting guys i know it's been a while since my last video just trying to find inspiration at the moment so if you have any ideas of what you would like me to cover um, on illustrator specifically let me know and i will definitely consider it for my next video thanks everyone and i'll see you on the next video Listen.